I'm Sigourney Cantalo and welcome to Beautiful Inside. I've been a beauty and health journalist reporting on how to be beautiful on the outside for 22 years. Now I want to explore inner beauty as well. I've been influenced to make this shift by my own mental health journey and it's prompted me to look for people like me who are willing to share their story. How do they care for their inner self while also attending to the outer? What have they learned about finding strength and courage and happiness in today's ever more challenging world? And what are the strategies that they've found to maintain that radiance, that joie de vivre, the inner spark that comes about when our minds and bodies are in balance? Come with me as we go inside the homes, routines and inner lives of fascinating people. We'll discuss the science and psychology of beauty and self-care and give you the tools to look and feel the very best you ever have, inside and out. Beautiful Inside acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land that this podcast is recorded on, and we pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. This episode is proudly brought to you by Synternals, the new premium supplement brand powered by Synergy Skin. When it came to finding a sponsor for my first season, Synergy Skin was the first brand I actually approached. Not only do I love using their skincare, but I adore the brand founder, Terry Vincent Jones. We've been friends for years and I've co-hosted many of their events, including their latest debut, Synternals. Terry, who is a cosmetic chemist and an author, she wrote the incredible book, Skinformation, is just a wealth of knowledge and she's my oracle when it comes to all things longevity and inner health. In fact, every time I see her, I whip out my notebook and take notes on everything she's taking from supplements, her diet and her exercise. She looks absolutely incredible, but she also is a shining example of how inner beauty radiates from someone. She has this beautiful warmth, energy, vitality that just comes through in everything she creates. Both the skincare and the supplements are made in Australia and they only contain potent ingredients that are proven to work. They're the perfect blend of science and nature. It's no surprise then that Terry's latest creation, Sinternals, is equally impressive from an efficacy and ingredient standpoint. But what I love most about them is that they're designed to boost your beauty and health from the inside out, which is exactly what we're all about here at Beautiful Inside. Welcome to Beautiful Inside by Beautycate. I'm your host, Sigourney Cantalo. If you enjoyed today's episode, please remember to subscribe and rate and review us on iTunes. It makes the world of difference. Now, I'm so excited to introduce today's guest. I have known Pip Edwards for over 20 years, and we always see each other out and about at functions. But lately, I've noticed a bit of a change come over her, and it's actually been really beautiful to watch. She was one of the first people I thought to interview on Beautiful Inside because she does really embody that quest for inner and outer beauty, the duality of it and the tension sometimes between the two. For years, Pip has shared her glossy, glamorous life on social media. She comes across as strong and energetic and dynamic. But recently, there's been a softer side emerging. She's been refreshingly vulnerable in her interviews. She talks a lot about the therapy that she's done and the struggle she's had raising her son while directing a fashion empire and having a very public private life. After years of being a type A high achiever, last year she was literally floored by some very debilitating perimenopause symptoms. And she's since become a very passionate women's health advocate, contributing to important conversations around menopause, stress, and the vital need to listen to our bodies. Today's chat was just as wonderful as I hoped it would be. We covered everything from egg freezing to parent pleasing, crystals, chakra balancing, NLP, and her unwavering commitment to daily horizon gazing. Stay tuned for an authentic and enlightening chat with Pip Edwards. How are you feeling, Pip? <laughs> I'm I'm a mix of emotions because um, I'm running on adrenaline. Mm. Obviously, it's so busy, mm. um, and I'm so excited, but. You know, it's been a few couple of years, mm. and I'm, I'm, I am depleted. Yes, and I am exhausted. I I have to admit that. Mm. But the excitement and the adrenaline, and you know, I I'm just I love to get to where I need to get to. That I I'm getting there, but I, but 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 I am feeling. Um, the body just give me signals Mm. of having to try try and slow down. Yes, yes. And you, this Mm. is what I was so excited to talk to you about because Mm. you are, you're so eloquent at describing how you're feeling. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's really, it's really refreshing and it's so lovely to hear and people, this is what we all want, we all want to know what it feels like to 
to yeah. be each other, you know, it's yeah. a human state. So, um, Oh, I will not hold back. <laughs> like, you know, there's there's one thing like to um, showcase, I guess, on social mm. media and mm. hold the fort and keep face and mm. have that game face and, and that's part of the job. And and, it, and it's not that it's a, a, um, a, a an a- acting role. I, I am those things but I'm also human. Mm. Um, I'm not superhuman. Yeah. Um, and at times you've got to be like a machine. But at times I've I know that in the past I've I've never acknowledged my body all those signals. And now I'm just like I need I actually need to. How do you do that? How do you dial into that? I'm I've, I'm really learning how how to instill the boundaries. And I feel guilty because I'm such a worker and. I work at such a fast pace and I, I almost thrive under pressure. Like I'm, that's just how I'm wired. But um, I, I know now that the downtime really makes for future progress. And I've never been able to understand that concept because I, I never know how to switch off. I think juggling so much in terms of raising a child, running a household, running a business, um, you know, having social responsibilities and then trying to have some kind of, you know, private life with my friends. It's like where I, there is no more time in the day. And I'm such a, I'm, I, I live such a full life and I love it. And I'm all embraced, like curious of all of that stuff. But it does come at a cost. Um, and the cost is, um, you know, um, just feeling. How is that silence for a minute? See, yeah. just just feeling a bit. Like, no, it's not empty, but it's just feeling a little bit flat. Mm. And I and I'm not used to feeling flat. So You're depleted. Um, I'm getting older. Well, <laughs> we are. I'm getting older. <laughs> um, oh. No, so it's it's not a it's a it's a really it's a real coming of age. It's a real you know taking stock, and it's a new thing for me. And mm. I'm really um, trying to understand and understand more about that Where, and not feel guilty for that. What have you learnt about listening to your body? What, what, what signs do you get when you, when you notice it? Well, you I'll tell listen? you when I'm not listening to my body and when I'm not listening to my body, it tells me mm. no. So I think for a number of years, my whole life, my brain, I've got such a, I, I know I have such a crazy mindset and my brain has driven um, that perseverance and that resilience through the obstacles and adversity of life and juggling so much. Um, but then my body, it, 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 it can collapse at times yeah. like it does. And I've seen it, I've seen it just not perform. Mm. Um, and I just have to go. And then I think, oh, is it an off day or blah, blah, blah. And I go, no, no, my body's now taking over going, no, Pip. You know, your brain's one thing, but your body it needs it needs healing. It needs it needs attention. It needs nurturing. Will you have a rest day in that situation, or what will you do? Yeah, I've started to um, generally more on Sundays is like yet yeah, slow mornings because mm. I don't know what a slow morning is. You know, forever getting up at six a.m. and getting the kid out and yeah. doing all these things, and um, so a slow morning is a luxury. But even what I also consider slow, which still might be fast for others, um, is just walking. Mm. And I think when I finish work every afternoon, I really try and just go for a walk. And it's not a power walk, but it's a walk to the ocean. It's a walk to the, um, I go to the Vaucluse cliffs and I have to see the ocean. Every day? Yeah, I try. That's amazing. Well, it's the only it's the only relief and it's and it's the place I go to where I see the horizon and I realize that I'm actually a lot smaller in this great big world and that it's limitless and that it's there's freedom and I'm not constricted by schedules time people um you know buildings office all this stuff I get to just go and horizon gazing is an interesting thing because I'm really into my NLP at the moment. Yeah, tell me. Neurolinguistics programming and a really simple way of of alleviating your serotonin and a, and kind of getting into a space of calm and rather being than always in fight or flight mm-hmm. is when you horizon gaze, you actually need to look above, and the action of your eyes looking above the horizon actually releases the perineal gland back here and it's such an easy thing and then I what I do is I play my 
current theme song or whatever the song it yeah. is that gives me joy. And What's I, your current theme song? Oh, <laughs> do you want me to sing it? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> no, it's an Annie Lennox song and it's called Little Bird. Oh, wow. Um, but lyrically it speaks to me and it's just got the right thing. But I play it and I just horizon gaze above and it makes me smile. And I think sometimes those moments... I smile a lot, but that's a that's a soul smile. Mm. It's a, it's a soul it's like a joy practice. Soil a soul smiling experience. How yeah, incredible. And so you you are going through some big changes with the brand at the moment. You're on the eve of Fashion Week. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us anything? You know, you, you said it's an incredibly exciting time. What is it? Yeah, it's a big milestone for P Nation. I mean, it's we're in our eighth year. Um, uh, we've had such a wild tornado ride ride of a business and you know we've exceeded expectations beyond belief and um now we're heralding this new era where we've actually taken back the reins um gone back to our roots and re-energized who we are and what we stand for because you know along the way you get lost up in crazy growth and you know all these opportunities come and now we're taking deliberate Um, consideration as to who we want to be and this evolution is the fresh future of PE. It's a PE like you've not seen before. I think the PE that, you know, that we started off with was this bold and confident woman that was like colour and colour clash and all Mm. this stuff and the clothes really spoke for the woman. Um, This PE is a coming of age and maybe it's got a lot to do with where I'm at in life as well, but um, it's that the clothes are there and the energy is there, but it allows the woman to speak for herself. So it's a bit of a role reversal. Wow. Is it similar? Um, you have a lot of duality. You know, you talk a lot about your masculine versus your feminine, yeah. and your strong versus your soft. Yeah. Is this it- one's leaning more into the soft. Great. I think because I've, um, you know, always been such a, I'm not like an alpha female, but like oh, a strong, yeah, woman, a strong yeah. woman that, um, you know, one that by by nature of just life experience, you know, you're a single mum, got to work, got to survive, yeah. got to get, get that happening. So you, you do turn into that um, always decisive making person. And I've never probably let the, the feminine or the softness come through. And now just understanding the importance of balance in life and taking stock and mm. just taking a breath. I think that really comes through in this collection where the dance of the softness and the hardness and that tension is beautiful, but you'll see a lot more of the soft. Oh, I'm so excited oh! to see. That's really cool. <laughs> I mean, and I love that you're, you know, translating all these learnings that you've had recently, you know. Well, I think that's, look, for me, my business, It's I've always lived and breathed it and it's, um, you know, it's mm. a personification mm. of I bring it to life and mm. it's it's a part of who I am and that's the authenticity. And yeah. if I can't speak to it and if I don't live and breathe it, then why mm. am I talking about it or why am I doing it? 100%. And I can't, live a, I can't live a life that's not me. No. Um, and, and your brand has to speak to who you are yeah, and, and you're standing behind yeah. it as, you know. And I think that's what makes it resonate with women. If, that, mm. if that's the real, honest, raw mm. truth, then that's what it is. Now, you w- had some health challenges in the last couple of years. Tell us about that and how that sort of made you take stock. <clears throat> Yeah, I guess, you know, uh, that the topic of menopause hasn't often been um, outli- outwardly spoken about. Um, my mother actually had early menopause and I remember young. She never really spoke about it. It was obviously a bit taboo. I knew she was on patches. I knew she'd have these crazy bouts of hot flushes, but I never really considered to ask her about that journey. And then, you know, I live this fast-paced life. I have a very clean diet. I'm I operate in a turbo speed, I'm super fit, I travel a lot, I'm exhausted, I have I juggle a million things on my plate. I've obviously got this hereditary line that I didn't know about. I was the perfect candidate for being um, early onset menopause or early peri and I think when I hit it in 39, it was a real shock to me because it just was not a consideration. Um, and obviously I've got the most beautiful child in the world um, but in terms of what, where it impacted me was that, you know, I still on the quest for a, a beautiful partner in life and sometimes, you know, 
I didn't know that maybe that element of not, you know, not having more children was never a consideration. And I think for me, hitting early menopause right at the start of COVID where um, I did start go down the road of egg freezing um, and then a week later we hit COVID and because it was elective surgery, um, I had to stop my rounds and um, I had to come to the terms of the fact that that it was never, it was not going to be an option. Um, so that was actually, it was a lot, not that I'd wanted I never, I didn't know if I wanted more kids, but it was the option and I was being robbed of an option that potentially could um, jeopardise a future with someone or, you know, a future I didn't know if I wanted or did wanted or not wanted. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I, I'm blessed that I got, I have a beautiful child, but my quest was, I think women need to know the life they live, lead and I think, you know, we're these modern women now that juggle so much and we don't know, we don't really understand the toll it's taken on our body and no one's really in tune with all those symptoms and the symptoms are everyday symptoms, um, you know, having back aches, um, you know, hot flushes, all these little things that you don't think are anything to do with anything, you, I, I just, it's made me listen to my body. Your body is everything. And that's the other thing I learned in NLP. Your body tells you more than your monkey brain, you know. Okay. Your monkey brain's just what's conditioned and what's been um, taught educationally from, you know, school and the, your landscape. But your body is your number one. Your gut and your gut health is everything. And I think now I'm more so in tune with my body that I can read it and I know I can see when things are happening and I'm just happy that I finally got to a place where that's my priority right now. Tell me about the NLP and how you got onto that. Neurolinguistic. Is it neurolinguistics programming. programming. So um, it's obviously a type of therapy, um, mm -hmm. but for me and anyone that's met me properly or understands me, I'm a big energy girl mm. um, and energy is everything to me. Um, I read it, I see it, I feel it, I can read a room like it. And I didn't realise how important it was to really hone in on that. And I really, um, I'm also, I mean, want for a better word, I'm highly intuitive in terms of the spiritual realm, realm and, and what that does. It combines all the things that I'm interested in along with that practice of energy, but along with the practice of really wanting to understand where I've been, what I've been through, how that's impacted me, not just mentally, physically and emotionally, but spiritually, and then how to harness my energy and how to understand those patterns in a way that my brain was not capable of computing. <laughs> <laughs> that's very well said. <laughs> how? Um, and I love it. I love it. I love to understand how energy impacts my nervous system, my physical being, and then how it also impacts people I interact with and mm. reading people and mm. understanding that mm. life is, is, it's not a textbook. It's not a, mm. it's not, and it's not cookie cutter for everyone, but it's this vibration mm. is how we feel. And, and I think when we can't, when we connect with how we feel and want to feel and interact with other people, that's really, that's all life is and then that's what relationships mm. are. So the better I can understand energy and how to use it and how to read it, the better relationships I'm going to have. That's so fascinating. Is that sort of linked to polyvagal theory? Is that sort of? Gosh, well, that's a new one. Do I need, do I need, <laughs> yeah, do I need to look into that? that? It's it's similar. It's another one, another one. Another one. The, the polyvagal. It, it's more like. It's, I do a lot of time. It's fight or flight. Food. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's that. What, it's what tips you into fight or flight. It, it, it's got a lot to do with that. But what it does is I go under hypnosis a lot. Oh. So I go up into the uh, into my into the... Quant quantum self. Oh, wow. Um, and we do a lot of timeline therapy. So I go back in time and it's not about me trying to remember things because mm. your brain can trick you. Your mm. brain um, remembers what it wants to remember but what it does is it taps into what your body receptor picked mm. up on and I've gone back in time to trauma points and trigger mm. points and have picked up a whole lot more of what I didn't see yeah, wow. um, or what I didn't feel and beyond what my brain interpreted Computes, yeah right 
um, and it's been eye-opening and it's been liberating and it's been and it's just made a whole lot more sense for me look it's not are these in-person sessions yes yes i'll have to get the details i, off you um, I need to do look, this work. i i stumbled across her because um this woman she's amazing but she worked on a friend of mine and it, it, it's on it, it it might not be for everyone yeah. because it, it is a bit ethereal and it is a bit esoteric and it's a bit um of another dimension oh, i've been doing similar work yeah. like somatic stuff I yeah think similar yeah yeah, yeah. but um I obviously I was going through a lot of um, personal, uh, personal, challenges? personal and public challenges, <laughs> um, and I had a milestone of of going to Burning Man, and not to go to Burning Man for maybe what everyone thinks Burning Man's for, but I really use Burning Man as a milestone to go to a place that is this oasis that pops up and then disappears, but where there's no contact no responsibility, mm. a break from the real world. I, I wasn't going to be a mum. I wasn't going to run a business. I was going to have this chance to have this 10 days of freedom mm. of to be me and to find me. But I knew that if I was out in Burning Man, a lot of things can pop up and confront you because you are not contactable with the real world. So I did this really hardcore NLP session and I went twice a week twice Before you went a to week Burning Man. for six months. Wow. Because I intensive. intensive. I really wanted to understand everything that could possibly unravel. <laughs> I wanted to meet and greet those those versions. The, the demons. The versions of me. <laughs> the versions. I needed to understand those versions of me. Like what 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 have I been what have I been ignoring? What wow. what what haven't I addressed? Why do I have these repeat patterns? And what's gonna fucking hit me out on the player? Because wow. I I wanted to be prepared. And That's it was, dedication, I have to yeah, say. Yeah, I've gone a bit Yeah, like you that. are, yeah. You type a, like, like whatever go it is, it. I'm going to, like, do Get, it to a yeah, million degree. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it set me up for one of the most amazing experiences of my life because I really was ready to see all versions of me yes. and I saw them in their glory. You did mm. and you were ready for it. Mm. You prepared. Mm. <laughs> I God, love I that. I didn't even know I was going to go there today. Wow. <laughs> so, yes. Well, I'll take it back to PE because yeah. we, we do need to cover, cover some bits and pieces. I wanted to know... Um, Talk, black talk is, to us black yes. is not my happy Yeah, let's color. talk about I, the new collection. <laughs> okay, so the new collection. Well, mm, the new collection mm. is... Um, an elevated um an elevated version of um it's not um it, it's 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 accessible everyday luxurious fabrications mm. we've 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 gone we've made a real point of finding these crazy amazing fabrications that are b corp and May, congratulations on your b corp Let's i know raise a i had to i mean we, that was an exciting. amazing feat for us very proud mm, achievement not for us. Easy to do. Um, but we've pared back the um, the logos. We've done deliberate um, hardware detailing that's mm. subliminal. Um, but it's all about the layering pieces, and it's really following that lifestyle movement. It's obviously there's some active wear pieces, but it's it's the, I think there's this real shift into lifestyle and recreation. So yeah. not just your discipline work, but this, ba this balance I'm talking about, whether it is just that walk or that, I don't, I, I, different ways of being in movement. So yeah. Um, yeah. it's about fashion, to, fashion that just moves with you because mm -hmm. we are dynamic people and we're never static. Mm -hmm. But whatever that means, it doesn't, you know, you don't need to be this high-performing elite athlete. You can just, if it's watching your son play basketball or, or whatever, it, wherever it is, it's um, fashion that moves with you. I love that. Mm. And that's so true, isn't it? You know, like often I find if I just put on something in the morning that feels a bit active wearish, I'm more inclined to get outside. And but move but, it, it, but it's, it's just, it's to move. Yeah. And I think the important thing is to get moving. And that's another thing from NLP, just FYI. Mm. If you're feeling in a rut or you're in a state, mm. you, just, you, just, you just move mm. and it changes your trajectory immediately. Don't stay in your rut. And I think just moving around yeah. keeps um, keeps the flow. What, so, what are your movement practices at the moment? I Have do. I do. I do a lot of walking, but I do. If I'm sitting down and I'm in a situation, it's so weird. I will get up and just move to another spot on the couch, <laughs> and it does. It changes. Well, you can't do that right now because we're filming. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, no, I move. Oh. I do lots of different. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm exploring different types of recreation. Like I'm getting into my sailing. Oh wow! Um, I do. Yeah, sailing's a big thing. That's I'm cool. trying to, you know, go to the driving range and do a bit of golf. Just a little bit of things that are just um, new, mm-hmm. new types of recreation for me that aren't as intense. Yeah, I was going to say, are you doing less of that yang sort of exercise, more yin? Do you yeah, do yoga or I I do not often. Yeah. But um I will I'm gonna start doing some um Bikram Pilates, which mm. I think is quite a new wow. thing for me, which I'm excited about. Yeah. Um but yeah. So you'll still do those intensive sweats, but I don't know. No, no not more in, no more intensive oh, sweats. It's so you've literally learnt. just Pilates. Because which, it's two cortisol raising? I don't yeah, and I don't know I've got enough of that. Yes. So I need to balance that yeah. out. Pilates for me is just for um, mental mental strength and knowing that my body is my support, the structure of my body, you know, supports me. But um, walking for me in nature is paramount. Can't beat it. Can't, yeah, can't yeah. beat it. Yeah. I mean, as humans, we're designed. Like we need to yeah. see green, we need to see blue, like it's that kind of. And, and hear and listen yes. and all of that. So you don't have music on while you're walking? I On and off. But if I'm near the ocean, I need to hear you it. need to listen to it. Yeah. No, oh, that's so cool. So how do you prepare, like you've obviously got Fashion Week just in a few short days. Um, how do you prepare mentally for Fashion Week? <laughs> um, look, you know, we've done, I've, I think I'm in my in my whole career span, I think I've done about 16 shows. So it's, wow. not, it's not my first rodeo. Yeah. Um, but to prepare is, is that we've had an amazing critical path. We have got everything um, structured free pre-planned for for months mm. but there is nothing that can actually prepare you for the day mm. as long as all the pieces are in motion there's that thing where it's like they're all happening and they're all moving and it's like <laughs> and then on the day you just hope it just goes <laughs> in a good um, way yeah no, yeah no so I think I I just think it's just yeah you just review what you've done you cross check the whole team are across it everyone's aligned there's there's the prep is just in. I think the prep is just in the mindset of knowing that you've got this and you've got your ducks in and row. yeah, and you just go for it. And is there anything you do physically or like even spiritually or? Oh, pull out all my tarot cards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Read, reading my horoscopes, going, what's happening on this day? <laughs> Am I seeing angel numbers? I don't know. All of those things. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Whatever works. Whatever right? works. We need our little, yeah, our little works. talismans. And, <laughs> and what are the mental health non-negotiable f- for your life that you have to fit into your life? You've got the walking. Walking, do you meditate? Pilates. I I used to meditate. I do need to bring that back. I know. It's, oh. I'm, a, I'm very slack in that practice. Um, I do try to read a couple of pages a day of a book. I'm not a I'm not a big reader, but um, I've started to do that before going to sleep, which That's I think's been really. And are they fiction or non-fiction books? No, they're slightly self-help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're not like, reading. You're not like escaping into another. No, it's you're, like you're, still you're trying learning. to self-improve. Still, still, still learn. Still Taipei. Um, <laughs> Achieve yeah, achievements. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What else do I? What else don't I know? Yeah. <laughs> in, in how to help, um, I I do burn. I I mean anyway, I do have, have you little. Got a favorite book lately? Like yeah, it's called Letting Go. Oh. Actually, my dear friend um, Jackie O uh, swore by it, hmm. and she gave it to me as a gift. Okay. I've gone through. I've got through chapter one, and it's it's, it's pretty mind blowing. Um, okay. I only started reading it two nights ago. Okay. But it's called I don't know who by, but it's just called Letting Go. Okay. The I'll art the art of surrender. And I think mm. um it's a really fascinating concept for me because yeah. it's not something I know how to do very well. So right. that's um something to read. Something to read, yep. Um but yeah, I think it's just I do a lot of a poor justice. The house is just <laughs> filled with incense all the time. I sage everything. That's I'm bad, my eh? crystals are in every corner of the house. I've got one in the front door. Got them by the bedside table. I actually sleep with a selonite sword. No, I know it's it's wild, but it, it's just to protect so my energy. So what's selenite for the uninitiated? So sel- oh, is that selenite? 
This is actually selenite. Um, it just clears everything. So when I, I've got this in my office because I put my phone, um, keys, I just, it needs, it clears energy and mm. it protects energy. But I have this version and it comes in the shape of a sword. No way. I know this is getting a bit woo-woo. Sorry, guys. But I love it. I sleep with it um, on my chest. And what it does is because when I sleep, I think you're open or prone to energetic transmission or something people attacks or whatever whatever it is i don't know but it it just it just protects me while i'm asleep um i don't know it's it whatever if it's a placebo give it doesn't matter where did you learn about that oh that's through my healer um i go so venustus as well oh yes um she's my little um, my little white witch i mean i obviously go there for massaging but i i go there separately for healing readings really yeah she's amazing so she gave me my sword I love that. Um, are we going into those? Yes, let's those do things? the sacred six. What um, is your sacred six? Okay, so I do a lot of, um, I do have a lot of healing chakra sprays. Mm. This one is purely in the office. This one's an Avedi sh- a chakra spray. It's, it's called Feel Intention, mm. and it's just to bring on feeling. And I, I actually go around the office and spray it. Oh, this one's got a high. Oh, I love that uh, one. I love just, all those Aveda sprays. It just in, I've got the full little six of the minis. Yeah, and I think I've got that it one. It just brings on a feeling. It's so um, this one is my morning one, but the other mm. morning one that I have at home, it's called um, Manifest Miracles. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I like Manifest Miracles. <laughs> but this one for the office is called Amazing Me. Oh, wow. And the mantra for this one, wait. Ingredients, wait, oh, here we go. The affirmation that you've got to say when you do it is, I am amazing me. I, I'm a divine spark of light shining here in the world. And sometimes you've just got to remember that you are the most unique you mm. and that is enough and yes. that is amazing. Yes. So this is amazing me. So, okay. And you just do it around or like this. Oh, gosh, that's beautiful. What is that? What's the Yeah, scent? I mean, the ingredients in this one, I mean, it's Grapefruit. got, yeah, it's got a lot of citrus, a bit of rose. Um, mm, that's gorgeous. Where did you find this? This is at that um, Health Emporium place or the health food store. I mean, the, the it's on um, Kalua Street in Bondi. Okay, I don't yeah. know, but they've got all these. They, there's different ones. Mm. I have one for justice, which is like, um, courage and bravery mm. and, and deep sleep. Like they've got Does all he use the things. Yeah, I he think, does. Well, I think poor kids. He's rubbed off on it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> um, but he loves it. I, love I think that. it's you know. Yeah. Um. Obviously, my two other practices daily are these guys. Daily. Okay. Yeah, I do it daily. When do um, you do it? I do this one after a day of work, or if there's if I've been around a lot of energies. Yeah. Because I pick, I take on a lot of energies, mm. so that's more if I've been there. This one I do in the mornings. It's just the sacred you know, the Palo Palo Santo. Santo. Um, It's just because it, it, yeah, that sacred smell is amazing and it's Mm. the positive one. This one clears everything. So this Mm. clears positive and negative. Do you sage after meetings and stuff when people are a bit? A little, it's just, it's just, it's not, it's not necessarily always a negative thing, Mm. but it's just because I'm so intuitively open, Mm. I don't, I don't need to take on other people's stuff. I have enough of my own, (laughs) you know? Yeah. It's keeping your slate clean. Um, and then another, I guess, in terms of a spiritual practice, which is an interesting one, is mm. um, for me to feel good and get in my zone. And I, I've got my AirPods here, but, like, it's putting on music in my ears to get me back into my zone. Mm. That's what is this one. So uh, music's really powerful to bring you back to your own space and your own essence. And mm. if you've got, you know, current theme songs or thing, or songs that bring back who you are and you mm. identify them when you're in a place of where you're just, you know, mm-hmm. it's all going on. Mm. This is what grounds me. Do you, I always find that I get in a rut with my music. Like how do you get out of the rut with your music? Or do you just go back in time or like find new artists or? Spotify radio is quite an yes. amazing thing. So if I, you go to your favourite songs and then you can loop in. I, I like to find new songs but I do have go-tos that I just yes. keep going back to and they're old favourites. Yeah. But the familiarity and then it takes me back to that time where I, yep, I know this is me, yep. then I can channel that. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. No, that's a really good one. Yeah. And what else have you got there? Oh, well, these are all like. These are all f- external these things. These are all external things. Okay, talk me through those. Um, because it's about, it's about both, right? It, it, when yeah, you're it's both. Outer. It's both. That's what the whole podcast it's is like about. It's like you're like, you're armour inside yes. and out. 
I don't know. I'm going back in time and bringing back Eight Hour Cream by Elizabeth Arden. I mean, yeah. that was back school days for me. The smell but like, of it. I don't know, it's thick in that, but um, mm. I put that everywhere just to mm. hydrate my skin because I find that I'm just always dehydrated. Mm. So that's my non-negotiable. Yep. Um, my perfume, my, I'm just so sensory, right? Mm. Like everything is sensory, whether it's like the incense and the, oh, I forgot about my incense, but oh, yes. incense is a big one. But um, music and feel and yes, touch and are. energy, yes, right? Yeah, yeah. All of those are sensory. Therefore, smell is sensory. So mm. when I put this on, this is my smell mm -hmm. and then I feel me. So Tom Ford ombre leather. Mm, let me have another Oh, one. my God. It's so, yeah, good. Like it's, oh, yes. And it's Demo's got, got and, that. And, I love it. And, and, yeah, and it's a bit like oh, it's, it's, so it's got a ma masculine. masculine. Mm. It's got a masculine. It's like an old leather like, bag or a leather jacket. Oh, or love it. Just so yummy. Yeah, yeah it's and so it's yummy. Woodiness and... Um, and then I love to be illuminated and highlighted yes. just to like, you know, <laughs> just bright, to look radiant. brighten up the day. So yeah, my little Mac strobe face glaze. Oh, that's a good it just, one. It just, just goes here. It's a mini one. Yeah, it's a mini one for the bag. Oh, good. Um, and then I always, I think, you know, this is just for bringing colour to the face. Mm. So it's got all the four things that you need, just highlighting colours and then a little bit of brightening for under the eye. Honestly, that, it called? it's a Mac four pack. Um, oh. So you just choose the colours or are they already? Yeah, you can choose it to your thing. Pro face palette. Pro, pro, it's just, Illuminate. it has every the, it, everything. Everything you need. Everything that could be like a version of like a foundation contouring everything. So And show us the incense. Oh, I know. <clears throat> incense. Yes, these are gentle habits. Is Gosh. that a Maison Balzac? Oh, that's a Maison. Oh, did I tell you? Yeah, yeah, my little incense holder. Cute. Maison Balzac. Mm. And then, yeah, this is incense. So this one's Bondi Beach. But I love... I love these gentle habits mm. in sense. You know, they go, let's take it slow. And you've got to take it slow. Exactly. So the this burns 24 7 in the office and at home. So beautiful. And the other, one's Byron, the other one's Byron Bay, which is where I'd rather be. <laughs> <laughs> Spiritual home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so beautiful. So they're my little things. So can we go back in time a little bit? Oh. <laughs> I know you love time doing walk. this. Um, back to childhood. So how do you think it shaped who you are today? Hmm. Yeah, you know, I'm an only child. Um, mm. My parents um, are quite academic high achievers and I think um, and why I say that is that I think when you have one child, there's, there is a lot of pressure for this child to be, they want the best for me and they wanted me to be the best and I did a lot. Mm. I, I multitasked a lot. Um, and I always wanted, I mean, this can be a pro and a con, but I always wanted their approval and I wanted to be the best child. Mm -hmm. What that taught me was I was dedicated. I was diligent. I worked really hard. I studied hard at school. I, I, I did my AMSA in piano. Yeah. I, law I, degree, law degree, all of the, all of the, tea, all of the things I, I, I probably did more than most as an only child, but yeah. that was not for me. It was for them, and I think along the way, it 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 was a lot. And I just only the beauty of hindsight can say that the discipline and the structure and and the drive mm. to improve and do mm. has really was really set the foundation for how I approach business and and my dedication to that. Um, on the flip side of that. Um, it's that turboness that um, can wear thin. Yes. So, um, yeah, I'm, you know, just trying to understand that balance. But if I didn't have their support, their drive or that or that in me, um, and then you add data later on in life, like becoming a single mum, I don't know if I would have had the resilience mm. to do it all. So I'm grateful yes. for, for the way they wanted to set me up in life. At the time, let me tell you, I, they were the strictest parents and <laughs> I didn't have much flex and, you know, didn't, my childhood was very, like I started playing piano at four and I, all through high school, played piano six hours a day. Like I, I didn't, six hours. yeah, I did, but like I didn't have a lot of, um, you know, freedom. Playtime. No. And then I went straight into a commerce law degree. So, uh, you know all of those things but I at the time I didn't you know I didn't know any better and, and I wanted to do that for them but it really taught me to multitask and juggle and commit and, and really commit mm. so 
I learned that from them. How did what you've learned about how you were parented, how did that change what you did with justice? Everything. Yeah. Except there are things where I'm slipping back into being my parents with but him. That, that happens. With that all happens. Of us, but with it? him, I realized is that he has his own strengths and weaknesses and he is not me. Mm. Um, and I can't force him to be a version of me, but I needed to identify what made him spark, maybe where his potential was, um, and and being lenient to that. Mm. And that's where I've just, I, I've not gone as hard as my parents did on me, but I've gone, I've just understood where his, his um, you know, where his potential really was and kind of nourished that, but at the same time go, okay, he's not wired like me. He doesn't rise under pressure. Pressure freaks him out. Yes. So how do I how do I adapt to that? And it's been a real learning curve. And him and I talk about it all the time in how, like even in the way we start, in the, the way I studied, I'd study, you wouldn't have to ask me to study. I was in there. Good him, I've got to, I've got to manage job. him and manage that. Um, mm. So I think it's about really understanding who your child is and wh- who they are because at the end of the day, you're just a vehicle as a parent and you're there to guide them um, and make them the best they can be, but you can't force them. Mm. What have you learned? I mean, how have you learned these these techniques for parenting? Was there, you know, is there a certain book that you read or advice that you got? Like how did it's you... It's just been talking to people, but to be honest, it came a little bit late. I think I, you know, Justice, he's a, he's a brilliant child and he has many talents, but what I did learn uh, really over in the last year or two is that he if I was to study at school I'd go into the study lockdown silent mm. and do it mm. he is tactile learning he needs he needs di- he needs sound he mm. needs to he needs to be in the bustle yep. to commit yeah and I could never understand that so I've had to really like allow that like when he mm. studies, he's got headphones on. Like, and it's a different time mm. and age. Like, yes. I didn't even know how I would study back then if I had my mobile phone. Hundred percent. Honestly, I just yeah. so we've we've we. It's a change. It's a changing landscape. My son's the same. He listens to like full on music while he's working. I'm like, TV Max, going. He can't. He wants me to. He focus. Wants, yeah, he wants to be in the kitchen while I'm there talking. But when that is happening, that's actually when he's doing his best work. Wow. So it's it's been it's been fascinating, um, but also to allow him to have some joy, and his joy is obviously basketball, and knowing mm. that if he's restricted from that, he won't perform in mm. other ways. And how have you sort of guided him on his career journey and what he's going to do ultimately? I've definitely facilitated what he wants, and he's got NBA dreams, and oh, not wow. every kid has a. I mean, that's a big pipeline dream. Yeah. But um, I facilitate it as much as I can because I know the joy it brings him, and for him to be supported yeah. is everything that he needs that's in amazing. life. That, yeah. And that's what your role is, isn't it? Yeah. Now I really want to drill down on the the challenges and then your strategies for coping um, because I really think it's going to help people. Um, Can you tell me about, say, the lowest point in your life and how did you cope with it? (laughs) Um, There's there's a few low, Mm. there's a few low, low moments. We can do more than one. I mean, a big one, a big one probably if we go back in time, one yeah. the big probably the biggest pivotal one was obviously, um, um, you know, leaving the father of the child. Yeah, that's a, that was a really big one. I was very young. Mm. How old was I? How old were you? Yeah. I was twenty eight. Yeah. Wow. And um, how old was Justice? No, sorry, I was twenty seven. Um, Justice was one. <sighs> yeah. God, that's really in the thick of it, isn't it? <sighs> yeah. Um, and I think. The thing is, I mean, like I said, I'm an only child and I'm very independent, um, but that really, yeah, that really um, rattled a lot of things about foundation, mm. who I am, what am I going to do, how do I survive with this child um, because his father le- le- just, you know, left and left the country. So I was very like oh, wow, I didn't know for majority of the time very single, very solo Um and how did I cope with that? I coped because I had amazing parents. Mm. Um, I had an amazing network and um, I had no choice. Yeah, one foot in front of the other. And and that's not, I mean, 
yeah, sure, that's one way of coping, but that's not one way of healing. Yeah. Um, and it took it took a long time to heal through that. But um, I just think when when you've got your true north and your anchor point is your son, mm. <laughs> that that maternal instinct kicks mm. in and nothing will stop you. So mm. that that my coping mechanism, I will say, probably continually, even through other low points, and mm. and get to the you know, mm. more recent ones and all of those, it's justice. Wow. It just is. It and and it just, just is. is. <laughs> it just is. It just is. And it's just us. Wow. And for oh, me what a perfect name. Yeah, no, honestly it is the perfect name because he he is the only thing that makes me get up in the morning. He's the only thing that got me through that. He's the only thing that made me continue on with trying to build a career. He's the only thing that mm. actually was the main reason for starting mm. my own business and mm. you know I, I want to give him all the opportunities I want to put him through school I want to give him an amazing roof over his head all those things yeah. it's not about um it's not about the money it's not about the fashion it's not about the industry mm. it it was literally maternal instinct and that that stuff's unbreakable like you can't I'm a bull to and I'm also Torian <laughs> I'm a bull to a red flag with that like you can't get in that yes. way there is nothing that will stop me yeah he's so your, the coping, he's your ultimate he's my, he is my coping mechanism yeah that's amazing and how has he grown and 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 evolved you know being what that way I'm being really honest here I, this is not something I always talk about but um, early on, you know, such a young mom and learning life with him, mm. growing up with him, yeah. um, he was exposed to a lot. Mm. There was never things I held back mm. from. Um, he understood the pain. He saw the emotional journey. Um, you know, some people were like, you've got to kind of like have some, you know, have some distance. And I'm like, I'm living with this child. Mm. I'm, I'm, he, I need him to see the raw, honest truth. Mm. And if we fast forward to today, to this nearly 18 year old, this kid is the most well adjusted, well balanced, intuitive, sensitive, modern man who knows exactly what women are capable mm. of, what they've gone through. He understands moral code. I, I can't tell you like where it might have gone the other way and, you know, this kid might have, I don't know, gone a different direction. Everything that he has seen, I know he he's an old, wise man in in a teenage body because mm. he he knows life. Well, that's right. You've he exposed knows him to it. life, and I'll stand by what I did, and it was trial and error, mm. <laughs> you know. But I've got the results of this kid who who now schools me, oh, and I, I I couldn't, I can't. I'm so grateful for the the man he's become and what will you do when he goes <laughs> this is the current dilemma I mean especially as a single mom and yeah. obviously him being my anchor point and being my coping mechanism mm. I'm fucking terrified yeah. of what that means for me and who I my identity and my every day it's bittersweet because he's so ready to fly yeah like you know but I just like it's it's a re it's a reality that's literally four months five months away um, so he's got a plan he's well going... yeah he finishes school and he wants to move to the states oh. and I'm a bit like but it's like I know but it's it's almost like it's my rebirth mm. No, it is. It is. it's actually like my taking... everything I've ever done has been for him. He's been the forefront of everything, of every decision. And as as sad and scared and terrified I am, I'm also like, fuck, maybe it's now my turn. Yes, hundred percent. It's like it's my turn for me. What do I want? Who do I want to be? Who am I? Do you have any ideas about that? <laughs> No. <laughs> you must have a little inkling of like I do know, some of the things you want to do or like I the do freedoms. Know, I do know, yeah, I do know there's a lot more exploring, like there's a lot more travelling and spontaneity yep. and I think I'm because I'm such a curious person, mm. I think uh, having spontaneity and it's not like a lack of responsibility but um, well, to you make. just have a bit of responsibility around here. <laughs> yeah, but to make choices that yeah. are based on me. Yeah. Is going to be really fascinating yeah. to watch yeah. and to feel.
Wow, I'm excited for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and are there any other sort of coping mechanisms that you developed in those low points that you yeah. talked about that you can share yeah. with us? Yeah, I think basically um, you've got to be in tune with your body and I think that's where I went down a very, not just health and wellness, but I mm. went down a spiritual road. Like um, healing. Healing and I think really confronting the whys and it's not why did that happen to me? Why did that happen for me? Ah, so flipping it. Got to flip the narrative. So it's a, it's a journey, it's a lesson or? Yeah, like what is the lesson? lesson? Like not, not, not focus on the pain, but what did I learn from it? Mm. Um, and let me tell you, there's been repeat patterns. <laughs> Clearly I didn't learn enough. What are your, what are but your I, patterns? But what do you kind of find yourself doing time? Oh, time I just, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm a very, I'm just so empathetic mm. that I, I believe, I feel and believe everything. Uh, I believe and say what I feel. So mm. I think everyone else is the same, mm. but they're not. Do you think you th that that is like sharing too much or is that I'm just honest. I don't think there's a problem with that, though. No, but it's a problem when you're dealing with people who aren't. Oh. And and I believe what they say. So, uh, you know, because oh, I think okay. people... They're not honest. They're not authentic. I feel, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I, um, through those patterns, it's more having... It's just a journey of self-worth. That's mm. the biggest one. Mm -hmm. Um and whether that stems from childhood of always wanting approval from my parents or trying to be the best I can be, that self-worth piece is a really big journey for me. And I, I know I've turned a page. I know I'm there. That's I'm really actually good. there. That's so good. But literally the only there in the last off. few days. <laughs> oh, really? In the last few days? Yeah, like in the last few days. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Happy birthday, self-worth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I think just... How do you get self-worth? You don't... You've always had it. You've just got to unlock it. I'm, I'm on a similar journey. You've just got yeah. to unlock it. It's always there. It's just cutting out the noise mm. and it's cutting out um, the person you think you have to be, especially yes. it's really hard when you're in a public forum mm. and you're up for scrutiny and there's a lot of noise and if you're, you're an empathetic person that it feels and feels deeply and passionately, how can you not take on what's being said mm. but the strength of anchoring so where I said my coping mechanism was before justice and owning into that my coping mechanism now is me yeah okay you know that it's you've got me. to step up I've done it be... I've done my time I've lived my life yeah. I've earned my stripes mm. I know what I need and I know who I am mm. no one can tell me otherwise mm. well I can see that <laughs> that's amazing well I think that we've covered a lot. <laughs> you are Sigourney, you managed to get a bit out of me that I don't <laughs> <Thank> normally <you>. say. <laughs> thank you. No, that was really beautiful and so I just love listening to you and talking oh, to you. Oh, thank you. Thanks for Thanks for sitting morning. on my couch oh, today in my thank office. You. Um thanks for sharing that. It was that that was actually and go forth and yeah. That was actually quite cathartic oh. and um I love being able to finally have these conversations anyway because yeah. This is the real deal. Yeah. I just think it's so amazing. I think it's just, you know, I love, I'm really grateful to you and thank you. <laughs> Here's to more incense and, yes. and NLP and crystals. And, and, and crystals and everything else in between. <laughs> Yay. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Beautiful Inside. If you enjoyed this, the best thing you can do is share it with a friend, leave a review or give us a rating. This podcast is for informational purposes only and is not a substitute for medical advice. If the content triggers you in any way, please contact Lifeline or Beyond Blue. Contact details in our show notes.